So welcome to this session. We're going to talk about uh, including security testing into your continuous delivery pipeline. Yeah. So we're going to go through a bit about why it's important, so the transformation, how you can incorporate this into your testing framework, how CA helps, and then we're going to do a demonstration showing it in action, showing it working live, and then there'll be a Q&A at the end. So, my name's Keith Pusey. I'm part of the engineering services team. So I actually work for the continuous delivery business unit. And um, when we talk about security, we, we, but more and more we include security into our release pipelines. And this is the reason why. You know, high profile breaches like Equifax, you know, there are signs where you know, we need to improve the way we deal with security to improve the way we deliver our code. And when we do it wrong, you know, there's big effects to the business. And as we know, you know vulnerabilities in development, no, um, introducing vulnerabilities in development actually is a big cost as you progress through the pipeline. So the sooner you can identify these vulnerabilities and issues, the sooner you can correct that and the less cost it is to the business. Yeah. There's things like you no know, server-side vulnerabilities on the rise. Uh, a big thing is container security. So when we look at containers, you no know, Docker's fantastic, containerization, microservices, these are all fantastic things. What about the security? How do you actually maintain the actual code in those containers? And we're going to go through that as part of our session today. Some interesting stats. So 35% of vulnerabilities are actually introduced by your development teams. So you're actually adding in your own issues. 30% uh, of all Docker, um, Docker containers actually contain some kind of vulnerability. Now, how do you actually manage that? How do you know what, what the issue is? How you can mitigate that? And a lot of these vulnerabilities come from off-the-shelf no, off libraries, third-party libraries. Now, it's not the code you're writing, it's the actual code you're leveraging for third parties. Now, why is that an issue for the enterprises? If you don't do this and you leave no vulnerabilities in your code, you are open to being hacked. You're leaving yourself open to your code being compromised. And some of the issue is the, the lack of security expertise. Now, too late, too often, we don't do security until the end. Now, development don't do security. QA don't do security. When you get to the, the tail end of the development cycle, suddenly security is important. So how do we shift left to actually include security in those early phases? And obviously, once you find a problem, it's expensive to fix. If you don't identify the issues early, you have to go back and do WeWork, and that's expensive. An example at the bottom there, uh, Gloucester City Council in the UK, they were fined £100,000 just because they didn't uh, apply a fix. Now that fix was a well-known fix, they didn't apply it. Three months later, they were hacked, £100,000 fine. Uh, and these are the questions we hear from our customers. So it's things like, you know, we need to deploy faster. The business wants us to develop quicker, we need to get code out quicker. But that, in, that could be a risk. The quicker you develop, the more you push out. You need to control that and manage that to make sure you're not introducing these vulnerabilities. So reducing the risk, um, yeah, so reducing the risk. You need to be able to defend your applications in production. But you also need to be, do that in this agile way. So the old ways don't always work with the modern technology. There's always a cost to this. So uh, no, the budgets are being squeezed. So how can you do this in a more efficient way that keeps the cost down, but also doesn't slow down your development cycles? And improving capabilities. So how do you actually improve, how do you get your security testing done early without hiring a load of new staff? Now, this is a good example of uh, high performance teams generally spending 50% less time remediating security issues. Yeah? They're finding them early, they're fixing them while they're still in development, before they get too far down the pipeline. Now, if you find an issue in pre-production, suddenly you've got to go back to dev, get it fixed, and go for that whole cycle again of testing. So there is a, a, a competitive and an engineering advantage by fixing this. And, and that's when we talk about DevSecOps. So including, now with DevOps have been around for a long time, we all know what DevOps is. It's including security within our DevOps cycle. And here at CA, 
This is kind of our, where we fit it into our cycle. So on the left, left is our, our lease cycle. So our, you know, our normal continuous delivery pipeline. We're gonna get code from a build tool. We're gonna to deploy it. We're gonna use CA's tool set. We're gonna to use like test data management. We're gonna use virtual services. But we're now including Veracode into our DevOps cycle. So Veracode allows us to do static code analysis. So an example today, we're gonna to do static code analysis. So you can take the code from your build tool, you can tend it, send it to Veracode, it will run those scans, and then give it output, what's, you know, what's the issues in that code base. And this is all driven around CA Continuous Delivery Director. So the dashboard you're gonna see is our CDD product. Now Veracode actually has, as you can see here, they cover from, from code on the left all the way to operate on the right. So on the left, we've got things like Greenlight. So Greenlight is actually built into your IDE. So with any clips, you can enable Greenlight. And as the developer's coding, we're scanning that code, looking for issues, and then alerting the engineer that there's an issue. So we fix this before it gets past the developer. And the stand just here is actually showing the, the Greenlight product. You can also get, then get into the, the static code analysis. So in the static code analysis, that's where you take your build, you send it to Vericode, they scan it, and they'll then give you the output. And we'll show you that as part of the demonstration. But also there's a, a dynamic code analysis. So the static code looks at your code in your third party libraries. The dynamic scan actually will then look at your website and do a, and like a penetration test against your website and then give you a view as to your, your infrastructure as and the code. So they, we cover the whole gamut of development all the way through to production. And it's all underlined as well by, down the bottom here, uh, a professional services organization who can help you when we do find an issue, they can help you remediate it. And including this is the third party component. So this isn't just like Sonar Cube, we're not just scanning the code. We're looking at the third party libraries you're using. I'm gonna show you about vulnerabilities in those third party, third party components that you're using, as well as your existing code base. Which is this very code software composition an analysis. Now also, now within our, our DevSecOps story, now obviously we'd love you to use all CA products, but no, you wouldn't all use all our CA product. So there are other third party tools and we're gonna to show you an integration with a tool called uh, Twistlock. So, um, does anyone know what a Twistlock is? No? I had to Google it, so that's fine. Um, a Twistlock is, if you imagine the, the containers, the big proper containers, when you put containers on top of each other, in the corner they kind of have that lock mechanism that locks two containers together. That's Twistlock, that's called a Twistlock. And, and the Twistlock organization, they allow you to scan your, your repositories looking for vulnerabilities inside your Docker images. And we're gonna show you how we can incorporate this into your DevSecOps cycle. So as well as doing the Vericode scan of the code, we're gonna use Twistlock to also scan our Docker repository and look at the images and also check to see if the actual images are compromised before we deploy them. So this is kind of the, uh, the graphic of the end-to-end. -end. So at the top here, at the top here, we have CA Continuous Delivery Director. This is a, your, your view into your pipeline, where you are in your release cycle, uh, what's running, what's waiting to be run, uh, there's analytics, uh, there's a demonstration just here to see more about this. And CDD then drives your pipeline. Now we're using Atomic here to drive the pipeline, so we're gonna use CDD to start off the release, Atomic to do the orchestration, and then we're gonna drive the bottom part of the picture, so including things like test data management, service virtualization, and Veracode. So at that point, let me switch to the demonstration. So we're gonna do an update to our application. So we've actually got two UIs to update. Uh, this is the main UI for our WebLogic server. And we made a modification to include the build number. We've also got the, the lightweight UI that we're developing and we're gonna show you an update that's gonna change this graphic over here and also you'll see the build number gets injected. So we're tracking everything in Agile Central. 
So let's go to Agile Central. So here's our Kanban board. We've got our project up here. Uh, we have our test results down the side. These are our user stories and our defects. Uh, we're going to go look at one user story, which is this user story here, which is the requirement for a lightweight UI. And if I drill into that user story, here's our story. Uh, it's planned for our Q2 release. We've broken the story down into tasks. Uh, if I go to the task, we'll see those tasks. And those tasks have been assigned to various individuals. So you'll see these are the tasks here. We're going to do things like we need to generate some APIs. We need to run performance testing. And also we need to actually update that graphic on that landing page. And we're going to show first the developer persona. So let's go to Eclipse. Now in our Eclipse environment here, what we've got is um, on the right hand side, we have our plugins and this plugin is for Agile Central. So this is showing all of the user stories and tasks and test cases for the developer that's using Eclipse. So here we can see that this user story has been assigned to this developer. And if I drill into that, that story contains these tasks. So we're going to work on this to change the graphics and we're going to double click on that. So from here, I can then make a change. So I can show the fact that I'm going to pick up this task, mark it as in progress. So we've now updated Agile Central to show that um, this task is now in progress. We could also add comments and descriptions. Just close that off. Now also within Eclipse, we've got our plugins for Vericode. So we have two plugins. One is the Vericode Greenlight. Uh, and this is the, the real-time scanner. So as I do uh, saves and commits, it does a scan. And what we can see here is Greenlight has identified an issue within the Java. I can then review the floor and the details within the context of Eclipse. We have the graphics here, a link off to the external sites for us to then go and make those changes within Eclipse before we actually do a commit. We're also going to actually... Um, we can get results back from Vericode. So as part of our build process, we send our builds to Vericode for being scanned. Uh, from here, I can download the results back into Eclipse. So this is showing me all the previous scans. So we can see that you no know, build 212, I can choose that. I can choose to download the results set from Vericode for build 212. Uh, it shows me the flaws that were identified. I can then click on those and also get details. So from here, again, I can review the, the output from those scans. We can then choose to review the description that identifies now what was what was the issue, the flaw identified, and steps needed to remediate that. So we can make those changes again with an eclipse. Now the task we're looking at is this modification of the UI. So let's go and make that change. So within our code here, We've got a very simple change. We're going to modify the graphic. So at the moment we have this, this picture of a doctor. We're going to change it to a line drawing. So we're going to do that by just literally uncommenting that line and then recommenting that line. So a very simple change. And then we're going to do the same there. Right, so we've now made the change. We can click Save. And if we go back to our, our web UI and we go back to our, our local copy of that web page and just hit Refresh, so within our developer environment, we've now made that change to our page. So as far as Eclipse is concerned, that change is made. Um, what we now need to do is make, take that change and then get it into the bigger build and actually start deploying it into our environments. So if we go to our, our Git UI, so you can see here, um, that's the file we just changed. It's picked up the change. So we're going to say this is our, our demo update or graphics change. Now also, um, this is a, this update is for task four. So we're gonna put TA4 on the end to then mark this as the change is linked to this task in Agile Central. We're gonna commit this to our Git repository. And then we're gonna do a push to update the master. Right, so we've now made that change and that change is now in our Git repository. So the next step is how do we get that into our test environment and test it with the other changes that we made. So let's go back to our web UI. And before we go on, we're going to go back to Agile Central. And if you remember that task, there's task four. If I refresh the screen, you'll see it's moved from defined. It's now in progress because the developer did that from the, the Eclipse plugin. 
And if I drill into the task, what we'll also see in the change sets over here is that that change to our repository has also been linked to the task. So there's the, the comment I just put into Git. So that git commit has been synced back to the task in Agile Central. Now from Agile Central, I can then click on this shortcut and it will show me the change in git. It will show me exactly what I changed, who changed it and how long ago. So we've now tracked that change within our Agile Central environment. And the next thing to do is to actually go and deploy this into our, our various environments and start running our tests. tests. So we're going to use our CD director as our release pipeline. So this is the dashboard view and it shows you that high level summary of our release environment. So how many of tasks are automated, how much time is manual, uh, our failure rates. Also, we can see here how much time we're spending each environment. So you can see here we spend a lot of time in development and not a lot in the other environments, which is good. And we're going to start our build from Jenkins. So let's go to Jenkins. Here's our project. So you can see um, our last build is build 213. So we're going to, when we create the new build, it should create 214. So we're going to push this into our development environment. And if I go to our development environment, what we'll see is that's the, uh, the graphic in our development environment. And if you remember, we've modified this. So when we push this out, this will change to be 214 and it will pick up the change to the graphics environment. So let's start that build. So build 214 has just started and we're doing various things. We're kicking off the release within CDD. We're also sending the update to Vericode. So let's go to CDD first. And here's our release. Now that release has just started automatically. And the first thing we've done is we've actually uh, notified the development team. So we use Flowdoc to tell the development team that the build has just started. And we've also got here all the tasks that need to run to deploy this into our environment. So this is a mixture of our standard release and also our security checks. So we're deploying some virtual services. Uh, we're deploying infrastructure with our Docker container and we're generating some test data. So we're going to start with the test data. So within our test data manager, we've submitted a job to generate test data for our application. And in here, what we'll see is um, that's the job we just ran. So the job was to clear the database of data and then generate new data for us to use testing. And what we need to do is actually pick up one of those records to use for our UI test. So we put new data in the database. We need to know what that data is. So when we do our UI test, we can validate the UI is working properly. And in the reservation system, we've reserved that record. So there's the job we just ran. And we've reserved this record here for, for Pat Mercator. Um, and we've picked up all the data here to use as part of our UI test. And we'll come back to this. Now, also in our release, you can see that's now done. The test data is done. Our virtual service is done. Our containers are ready. Um, we also use Twistlock to scan our Docker repository to check the images for vulnerabilities. And, and that failed. And if I click on that, we'll see what failed. Now, we set a threshold as to what vulnerabilities we need to check for. Uh, and these are the ones that have been triggered as being uh, issues within the image that we're looking at. Now, we can now choose to either carry on or we could actually stop this release and perhaps resolve the issue before we carry on. Now, we could go to Twistlock and review this. So Twistlock, here's our dashboard of our Twistlock environment. And we can actually go and look at those vulnerabilities. We can see um, what vulnerabilities are in our environment, where they are, which images, also in which containers as a real-time scanner as well. Uh, and we can then go into here and look at the compliance and make a decision as to whether or not we should carry on with this particular image for our release. Now we're gonna to choose to carry on. So we're gonna go back to our CD director uh, and we can then say, we're gonna skip. Now this will be audited against my particular user. So I can now, skip this and what we're now doing is now those tasks are complete we can go on to the next task and that task is to actually do a deployment and we're using atomic to do this so if we go to our atomic system and we go to our release automation section uh, we can now look at the tasks that are running and you can see we these are the tasks that ran before and these tasks have done things like um, provision the works the virtual service they provisioned our docker containers 
and this is the task that's currently running and what this is doing is several things um, we're deploying the update to our web page and also we're deploying our update to weblogic so in weblogic what we're doing is we're stopping the environment which you'll see there so we've stopped our weblogic application we're undeploying it then we're going to redeploy it so that's what we're seeing here that's the stop that's the undeploy then there's a deploy then there's a start and also we've deployed the update to our website that's the other ui that we did the commit in eclipse so when we refresh this screen what we'll see is we've now um, done all these tasks and we're on the last task which is to bring back up the instance in weblogic so if we go back to our weblogic server and we just refresh this screen you can see that build 214 is now deployed so we've deployed it uh, we've also deployed the new test data that you just saw for this application if we go to our our test environment for the web ui and i'll refresh this you can see that change has been committed with the updated graphics and also the updated build number so we've now deployed this into our environment uh, and we can now move on to our testing so we now have this bank of testing so we're going to run a ui test a performance test an api test and also um, validate, validate that the Vericode scan has passed its scan. So this is including security in our normal functional and UI testing. So let's go and look at the UI test first. So this is the UI test. And we're running various tests here. We're running some Selenium tests. We're running all the normal tests you'd need to run. And in just a second when this draws, we're going to drill into one of these tests uh, because one of the tests is using the the output from our test data management system. So as soon as this is redrawn, we're going to drill into this test case three. So you can see these tests have run. This test is currently active. We're going to look at this test case three, which is the one that used the data that we've got from our, our TDM system. And what you'll see here is that user that we just saw in test data management has been passed to our app test tool to use as part of the UI test. So the UI test is logged into the application server. It's drilled down to the page with a patient record. And then this you can see here, here's the data that we just uh, saw in TDM. So the UI test has checked that has that user data been presented correctly by the application server. And as you can see, uh, the test has passed. Now also we ran the UI test and our performance test. So this is Blaze Meter. And what we can see here is um, we've actually run a performance test and we've generated load against our environment to check that our uh, app server is performing correctly. And we're also running an API test and that's going to do a, a positive and negative API test. Now, as these complete, what we'll see here in CDD is you can see here the UI test is completed. Uh, these tests are still running. So the Vericode test is still running. So let's go to Vericode. So in Vericode, what we did is we submitted the code from Jenkins directly to Vericode. So let's drill into here. And you'll see there, that's build 214. And it actually is finished, it's passed. And if we go and view the report, what we can see is that um, we passed our evaluation. And if we go into the policy control, we'll actually see that even though there were some issues, um, we set a value that we need to get at least a 70 as part of our requirements. We got 98, which means we passed and we can then carry on. Now within Vericode, you can then go and review the report and you'll see what flaws were identified, uh, details on the floor, which file it was found in and an idea as to how long it would take to resolve this. Now, as you said, this is passed. So if we go back to our CD director, what we now see is that Vericode is now completed. So from the release team perspective, we can now see we've passed our security scans. Uh, we've completed our UI tests. We've just finished our performance tests and our API tests. And what we can now do is check, did all the test cases pass? So this is now checking this up task here. Did all the test cases pass? And if they did, we can carry on. And they did. So we can now deprovision those virtual services, deprovision that infrastructure we built notify the team that we've we completed all the work and then commit that build into a repository because it passed that first development phase and at this point what we could also do is promote it into a higher environment so now we've done that initial development testing we can then uh, approve this to be released into qa 
this could have been automated. Now, in our case, we're going to actually just say we're going to approve it and allow that build 214 to then start in our QA environment. So take that build we've just released and deploy it into the next environment, like so. And as you can see here, we've structured all the tasks that need to be done in each environment. So this has been built by our release team as to everything we need to do to complete this in each environment. Now, as I mentioned, we've been sending these messages to our flow doc queue. So from the development perspective, uh, they would see all this data. You can see here that that build 214 has just started in QA. That's where it finished in development. Um, we have our data from Agile Central, as you can see here. So those results from our test cases have been pushed to development and they can see within this flow doc stream, the test ran and it passed. And to finish this off, if I go back to our Agile Central system and we just go back to our dashboards, um, all this test data has been fed back up to Agile Central. So as you can see on the right hand side here, we can see that these test cases, that's the Jenkins build number, that's the test case. We can see that they're all passing. We can also drill into these. So if I drill into that one, that will take me directly to that test case and we can look at the results set. So you can see there that we passed. Um, we have links here that then take you back to, in this case, our BlazeMeter tool to review the report. So this shows the whole end-to-end -end flow of our DevSecOps story, how we can work from development all the way through your CI tool and your release pipeline and then promotion into production. So as you can see here with CDD, once we're finished in QA, we can then promote this build 214 into our UAT, into our pre-production and production testing with security from end to end. Now, when we talk about adding security into your DevOps cycle, a lot of people think that at, no, doing this kind of security checking is gonna actually slow things down. But that's not true. No, I love this statement that when you put a guardrail, up, guardrail on a highway, it's there to stop you coming crashing off. It actually makes you go faster because you feel safer. Including security into your pipeline is exactly the same thing. No, you're doing this testing very early. You're going to find these issues very early. And as part of that, you can then um, speed up your process. Yeah? You should find a lot less problems in the higher environments because you're going to catch them early. Which is basically what the whole pretext of this session is. You need to include security within your, no, this is the shift left. You need to be doing this very early. No, in the IDE, in your build process. You need to automate. So as part of your build process, it's an automatic process you go through as you go through any other testing. No, security is not some kind of black art that we can't all do. No, security is basically, it's up to all of us to basically ensure that applications are secure. And by doing this, we're gonna speed up to market, speed our applications market, make us more agile, speed up our development cycles, and also the visibility. The visibility of the release teams, they can see you know, that we've done everything and it's all working properly. And also the visibility of the security teams to see what you're doing. They're aware that you've done these scans. Now they're aware of where the problems are. They can interact with you very early in the cycle to resolve these problems. And it also empowers the developers to get involved in these scans. Now they get to see when they're writing, instead of they develop something and some weeks later, and the vulnerability is found, and it gets sent back to development to fix. This is like within a few days, these issues get found, they can fix it a lot quicker. Uh, and as a developer, that's always better. They've opened the code up and they found a problem. It's easier to fix it then than it is three weeks later when you've moved on to another project.